philosophies revived. Picture this, you're navigating the stormy seas of life, and the Stoics hand you a compass, the dichotomy of control. But wait, isn't it just about distinguishing between what you can and can't control? Well, it's a bit like saying a burger is just a bun and a patty. There's more to it than meets the eye. Epictetus, the Stoic OG laid down the foundation of this idea around 125 AD. He believed that the first job of a philosopher that's you, embracing the Stoic path, is to split things into two pots, what's in your control and what's not. Sounds straightforward, right? Well, let's unpack it. Internals v's. Externals, the Stoic Game of Thrones. Stoics throws around terms like internals, things you control, and externals, things you don't, but let's break it down further. Internals are the vips in your life, your actions, thoughts, pursuits, desires, and aversions. Externals, on the other hand, are the less predictable guests at your party, your body, property, image, commands, and anything outside your control. Epictetus drops some wisdom bombs like, I cannot escape death, but I can escape fear of it. Here's where it gets interesting. The stoic stance is clear, right? Focus on what you can control, let go of the rest. But life, my friend, isn't always that black and white. The fuzzy line of control, stoicism's gray area. Epictetus might wag a finger at me saying, you can't control how many people will like this video, only how hard you work on it. True, but what if I tell you that my actions, my sincerity to the camera, could influence those likes? Suddenly, the line between what's in our control and what isn't blurs. Enter Zeno of Citium, the first Stoic, who looked at the big questions, what's genuinely good? Food, wealth, looks there like that unreliable friend who's there one day and gone the next. So, Zeno narrows it down to the real VPs, reason, virtue, and good nature. These, according to Zeno, are in our control and the keys to a virtuous life. Preferred indifference, the stoic not-so-gray area. Zeno's got this tricky concept called preferred indifference. Hold on, isn't that an oxymoron? Well, here's the stoic twist. While we shouldn't cling desperately to externals, we can still prefer them if they align with our nature. Confusing? Let's simplify. Imagine you're a stoic farmer. Rain, external, is preferred because it helps your crops grow. But, and it's a big but, if drought strikes, you remain unfazed. The stoic method, though, raises eyebrows. It's like saying, I don't care about these externals. But hey, if they come my way, cool beans. Stoicism in a nutshell, the internal-external tango. Here's where the Stoic dance gets intricate. While they tell you not to care about externals, they also acknowledge their usefulness. It's a paradox care, but don't care too much. Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, and the gang lived in a world that dealt them a harsh hand of uncertainty, making them preach resilience to life's punches. Stoicism's time travel from ancient to modern. Now, let's hop in a philosophical time machine. The ancients weren't sipping lattes in a cozy calf. They were grappling with a world drenched in unpredictability, disease, and the occasional emperor with a taste for cruelty. Seneca met his end at the hands of Nero, not because he was a poor philosopher, but because he played in the viper's den. Rome, back then, was the MMA ring of politics, no holds barred. Emperors played chess with lives, Christians faced the wrath of hungry dogs, and calamities, like the Great Fire of 64, a deep painted the sky with the city's agony. Seneca's daily reminder life is short. People suck. Death is around the corner, wasn't pessimism, it was survival. Stoicism and the cosmic order, the play of fate. Let's zoom out a bit. Stoicism isn't just a therapy session for the soul, it's an entire worldview crafted by the ancients. In their cosmic view, physics, logic, and ethics held hands and danced around the idea 
that the universe orchestrated by the gods had a grand plan. Zeno, the cosmic architect, believed we must live in harmony with this divine blueprint. Fate, with its trio of spirits Clotho, Lachesis, and Atropos, spun the threads of our lives. Stoics advocated embracing fate, a love affair with your destiny, epitomized by the Latin phrase, Amor fati, love your fate. Stoic paradox, love or fight fate. Now, holiday sports and amor fati tattoo, urging us to embrace fate, make it our ally. But what if we throw a curveball and declare pugna fati fight fate? Imagine saying, I won't just accept what's handed to me. I'll wrestle with destiny, shape it to my will. Stoicism, in its attempt to find solace in acceptance, sometimes forgets the rebellious spirit within us. Nietzsche, that wild philosopher, found Stoicism both inspiring and nonsensical. He admired the Stoic resilience, but scoffed at the idea of suppressing emotions, calling it a denial of life's vibrant colors. Stoicism v's evolution, emotions, friend, or foe? Let's zoom into our modern microscope. Neuroscience tells us a different story about emotions. They aren't external invaders, but an integral part of our cognition, guiding us through life's maze. Antonio Damasio argues that emotions are the threads stitching reason and experience, not foes to be vanquished. Holiday's caution emotions can be harmful if unchecked is true. But what if we don't label them as enemies? Anxiety, pain, anger, they aren't always adversaries. Sometimes, they're our navigators through life's stormy waters. Stoicism and the art of living forever. Let's circle back to that stoic advice of living each day as if it were your last. It's like sprinting a marathon you might burn out before the finish line. What if, instead, we viewed life as an epic novel, each day a chapter contributing to the grand narrative of our existence? Imagine waking up every morning, not fearing death, but embracing life's uncovenanted surplus, planning for the long haul. Isn't that the essence of being truly alive? Life isn't a fleeting moment, but a perpetual dance, a continuous creation of stories, relationships, and growth. Zeno's search for the truly good. Picture Athens in 301 B. See a bustling city filled with thinkers, philosophers, and seekers of truth. Among them stood Zeno, a man with a burning desire to uncover the essence of the truly good. He observed the external world, scrutinized its offerings, and pondered over what could be universally deemed as good. Zeno, unlike his contemporaries, wasn't swayed by the fleeting nature of external possessions, wealth, looks, or talent. He saw them as dual-edged swords, capable of being used for both good and bad. Instead, he set his sights on the internal, the realm of our reason, virtue, and innate goodness. In the words of Cicero, Zeno constructed a stoic system so well built that altering a single letter would shake the entire philosophical structure. Valuing and preferred indifference, the stoic philosophy, as Zeno envisioned it, presented a clear line of demarcation between what we can control, internals, and what we cannot. Externals, however, this clarity becomes a bit hazy upon closer inspection. Zeno introduced the concept of preferred indifference, a nuanced idea, suggesting that while we shouldn't be emotionally attached to external things, we can still prefer them if circumstances allow. For instance, we may prefer good health, wealth, or relationships, recognizing their utility in a virtuous life. The challenge lies in balancing this preference without succumbing to the attachments that Stoicism warns against. The paradox of control, the stoic dichotomy of control, as presented by Zeno, encourages us to focus on what's within our power, our actions, thoughts, pursuits, desires, and aversions. Yet, life's complexity adds layers to this seemingly straightforward principle. Consider this, I may not control how many people like this video, but my efforts, sincerity, 
and ability to connect with the audience could influence that outcome. Zeno's distinction between internals and externals begins to blur as we navigate the intricacies of influence, effort, and the interconnectedness of our actions with the world around us. Zeno's ethical triad, to truly understand Zeno's Stoicism, we must explore the ethical triad wisdom, reason, courage, virtue, and justice. Zeno proposed that these virtues, rooted in our internal nature, guide us toward a life in harmony with the grand scheme of the universe. Yet, herein lies the paradox. If we detach ourselves entirely from external factors, how do we assign value? The Stoic method may struggle to establish a hierarchical value system, as it tends to label all externals as indifferent. This approach could inadvertently strip life of its richness, reducing everything to a binary distinction between what's within and outside our control. Nature and the Stoics disconnect. Zeno's Stoicism suggests that living in accordance with nature involves changing ourselves first. However, this philosophy overlooks a crucial aspect, our profound connection to the external world. Instead of perceiving ourselves as separate entities imposing order upon chaos, what if we acknowledged that we are an integral part of nature? The Stoic view often contrasts with modern research that highlights the integration of emotions into cognition. Neuroscientist Antonio Damasio argues that emotions are not merely external disruptions, but integral to how we reason, navigate the world, and make decisions. Our emotions, far from being a hindrance, shape our understanding and response to the world. The Stoics' relationship with fate and fatalism, the Stoics believed in an ordered universe, governed by fate and divine plans. This acceptance of fate, often encapsulated in the phrase amor fati, love of fate, can be both empowering and limiting. Embracing fate may provide solace in the face of life's uncertainties. But what if we challenged fate? The Stoics' call to love fate might find an alternative in pugna fati, fight fate. This shift from passive acceptance to active resistance resonates with the human spirit's desire to shape destinies, challenge injustices, and overcome adversities. The dichotomy of control revisited. While Zeno's dichotomy of control serves as the cornerstone of Stoicism, we must acknowledge its limitations. Life's dynamic nature, coupled with our ability to influence external factors, blurs the lines between what we can and cannot control. The Stoic call to focus solely on internals overlooks the intricate dance between our actions and the world. In our quest to understand Zeno's Stoicism, we encounter a paradox, a philosophy that advocates detachment from externals yet fails to provide a comprehensive system for valuing and navigating the richness of life. As we continue this exploration, we'll delve into the thoughts of philosophers like Nietzsche and Hegel, who critiqued Stoicism and offered alternative perspectives on embracing life's complexities. The tragic history of Rome and the shortness of life, unraveling the Stoic perspective. In exploring the roots of Stoicism, it's crucial to delve into the historical context that birthed this philosophical outlook. Ancient Rome, a crucible of power struggles, decadence and existential uncertainties, set the stage for the Stoic philosophy to emerge as a guiding light in the tumultuous lives of its thinkers. The harsh tapestry of ancient Rome, picture Rome during its heyday, a city pulsating with life yet steeped in the shadows of political intrigue, wars and moral ambivalence. The Stoics, such as Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, were not detached ivory tower philosophers, they were individuals navigating a world fraught with danger, uncertainty, and the ever-looming specter of mortality. Amidst the grandeur of the Roman Empire, life was precarious. Hunger, disease, and the constant threat of war were omnipresent. The misadventures of emperors like Nero, Caligula, and Claudius highlighted the capricious nature of power, where one wrong move could lead to banishment or a gruesome demise. 
Rome wasn't just a city of marvels. It was a stage for the tragic theater of human existence. Seneca's struggles. Consider the life of Seneca, a prominent Stoic philosopher who grappled with the unpredictability of fate. Seneca's existence was a delicate dance between the whims of emperors and the fickleness of fortune. Accused of conspiring against Emperor Claudius, he faced the ultimate Stoic test, his own execution. Forced to take his own life, Seneca's end mirrored the very tragedies he philosophized about. As an advisor to Nero, Seneca witnessed firsthand the excesses of power, the volatility of rulers, and the moral compromises demanded by political survival. Stoicism wasn't an abstract concept for Seneca. It was a coping mechanism for a man entangled in the complex web of Roman politics, where survival often meant navigating treacherous waters. Marcus Aurelius and the weight of rule. Enter Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic emperor, philosopher king, burdened with the responsibility of leading Rome through wars, plagues, and political upheavals. His reign coincided with the Antonine Plague, a devastating pandemic that claimed millions of lives across the empire. The Stoic precepts etched in his meditations weren't platitudes. They were the coping strategies of a ruler facing the relentless onslaughts of fate. The shortness of life, a recurring theme in Stoicism, wasn't an abstract musing for Marcus. It was a stark reality. The brevity of existence was underscored by the perpetual threats to his reign external invasions, internal rebellions, and the ever-looming shadow of mortality. As he contemplated the transitory nature of existence, Marcus Aurelius wasn't detached from the struggles of his subjects. He was a participant in the tragic narrative of Roman history. The unyielding Stoic perspective. In understanding Stoicism, it's vital to grasp the emotional and psychological backdrop against which it flourished. Stoics weren't preaching detachment from the world as an intellectual exercise. They were advocating for resilience in the face of a world marked by suffering, chaos, and impermanence. The Stoic emphasis on accepting the inevitability of death and embracing the present moment wasn't an invitation to passivity. It was a strategy for maintaining equanimity in a world marked by upheaval. Seneca's meditations on death weren't mere philosophical musings. They were the introspections of a man who knew that the next political intrigue could be his last. Stoicism in a world of uncertainties. Why did Stoicism resonate in ancient Rome? The answer lies in the very fabric of Roman existence, a life characterized by uncertainties, where power dynamics were volatile, and the only certainty was the inevitability of change. Stoicism wasn't an intellectual luxury, it was a pragmatic approach to navigating a world where the ground beneath one's feet was ever shifting. The Stoic dichotomy of control, separating what is within our control from what isn't, wasn't an abstract notion for Romans. It was a survival strategy. In a society where one's fate could be decided by a whimsical ruler or a sudden twist of political fate, Stoicism offered a psychological anchor, an internal fortress that remained impervious to external storms. Seneca's Stoic Legacy Seneca's life encapsulates the essence of Stoicism in the crucible of Roman history. Forced into exile by Claudius, accused of conspiracy, recalled by Nero, and ultimately compelled to take his own life, Seneca's journey was a testament to the Stoic paradox finding tranquility in the midst of turmoil. Stoicism wasn't a shield against adversity. It was a way of confronting the inevitable with dignity and poise. Seneca's writings, laden with insights into the human condition, weren't detached philosophical treatises. They were the musings of a man intimately acquainted with the harsh realities of his time. Marcus Aurelius's Stoic Rule As an emperor, Marcus Aurelius faced the Sisyphean task of governing an empire besieged by external threats and internal strife. The Stoic principles that permeate his meditations weren't theoretical constructs. They were the coping mechanisms of a ruler, grappling with the ephemeral nature of power and the perennial challenges of leadership. 
In a world where the whims of fate could topple empires and erase legacies, Marcus Aurelius found solace in Stoicism. The emphasis on virtue, the acceptance of the transitory nature of life, and the cultivation of an inner citadel were tools for navigating the uncharted waters of Roman rule. Stoicism as a response to tragedy, the enduring appeal of Stoicism lies in its roots, nourished by the soil of tragedy, uncertainty, and the brevity of life. It wasn't a detached philosophy for armchair intellectuals. It was a lifeline for individuals entangled in the complexities of Roman existence. The Stoics weren't preaching from Olympian heights. They were fellow travelers in the arduous journey of life. As we reflect on the tragic history of Rome, we glimpse the crucible that forged Stoicism. It wasn't an ivory tower philosophy divorced from reality. It was a pragmatic response to the challenges of an era marked by political intrigue, existential uncertainties, and the perennial dance with mortality, the fate gods, and living in harmony with nature. Stoicism, deeply rooted in the philosophies of ancient Greece and Rome, encompasses a worldview that seeks to navigate the complexities of life through a lens of control and tranquility. Central to this philosophy is the concept of the fate gods and the idea of living in harmony with nature. Let's delve into these aspects to unravel the essence of Stoicism and explore their relevance in our contemporary lives. The fate gods in the tapestry of Stoic beliefs the fate gods play a pivotal role. For the ancient Greeks and Romans, Stoicism was not merely an ethical guideline, but a comprehensive system involving the study of logic, physics, and ethics. The Stoic view of physics extended beyond the modern concept, encapsulating an understanding of nature, religion, and the orchestrated order of the universe. The Stoics believed in a predetermined fate woven by the hands of supernatural entities like Clotho, Lachesis, and Atropos, representing the spirits of fate. Acceptance of this predetermined fate was integral to the Stoic philosophy. The belief that our lives are part of a grand plan, orchestrated by divine forces, provided a sense of comfort and direction. Seneca's Stoic advice to accept what happened to us resonates with this deterministic worldview. In contrast to modern perspectives, where individual agency and free will are often emphasized, the Stoics found solace in relinquishing control to the hands of fate. The interconnectedness of their lives with the cosmic plan allowed them to navigate the tumultuous seas of their existence with a certain Stoic equanimity. Living in harmony with nature, the Stoic assertion to live in harmony with nature is deeply rooted in the ancient Greek understanding of the world. Zeno of Citium, the founder of Stoicism, laid the foundation by exploring the nature of the good. He posited that external factors like wealth, possessions, and physical attributes could not be categorically labeled as universally good since their impact depended on how they were used. This Stoic view gained clarity through the dichotomy of control urging individuals to focus on what they could control, mainly their actions, thoughts, pursuits, desires, and aversions. The Stoics advocated for a detachment from external factors, labeling them as preferred indifference. While the Stoic method provides a clear line between what is within and outside our control, it introduces challenges upon closer examination. The Stoic perspective tends to oversimplify this distinction as the line between control and lack of control blurs in the intricate dance of life. The ability to influence external factors through small actions, persuasion, and engagement challenges, the rigid boundaries set by Stoicism. The dynamic nature of our interaction with the world often defies the Stoic notion of a clear separation between internals and externals. The Stoic approach to valuing things also presents a paradox. While advocating for non-attachment to external elements, Stoicism recognizes the practical need for certain things like food, clothing, and relationships. Zeno's concept of preferred indifference suggests a delicate balance, a recognition of their utility 
while maintaining a distance to prevent dependence. Challenges to Stoic philosophy. Despite its apparent wisdom, Stoicism encounters criticism, particularly in the context of its fatalistic outlook and detachment from the external world. Nietzsche and Hegel, prominent philosophers from the 19th century, scrutinized Stoicism's fundamental premises. Friedrich Nietzsche, in his exploration of Stoicism, acknowledges its resilience and self-sufficiency, but questions its inherent contradictions. The Stoic emphasis on suppressing emotions and passions as external irrational forces contradicts the essential role emotions play in cognition and human experience. Nietzsche argues that Stoicism's prescription of indifference and emotional coldness oversimplifies the intricate tapestry of human emotions. Hegel, too, critiques Stoicism from a perspective rooted in the socio-political landscape of Roman society. He posits that Stoicism emerged as a coping mechanism for slaves subjected to the whims of their masters. The Stoic slave, faced with external oppression, retreats into the fortress of their thoughts, a realm beyond the master's control. This psychological defense, while providing temporary relief, does not alter the reality of the world happening outside the walls of the mind. In essence, both Nietzsche and Hegel challenge the Stoic inclination towards detachment, highlighting the importance of engaging with the external world rather than creating a psychological barrier against it. Stoicism in the modern context. As we revisit Stoicism in the context of our contemporary lives, its resurgence in popularity is undeniable. The call for resilience, self-discipline, and an unwavering focus on internal virtues resonates with individuals navigating the complexities of the modern world. Stoicism provides a toolkit for coping with the challenges of the human experience, urging individuals to find strength within themselves. However, the question remains, does Stoicism offer a comprehensive and applicable philosophy for our times? or does it carry inherent flaws that limit its relevance? In our current era, characterized by rapid technological advancements, interconnected global systems, and a nuanced understanding of human psychology, the stoic dichotomy of control faces scrutiny. The dynamic nature of our interactions with the world challenges the simplicity of categorizing elements into controllable internals and uncontrollable externals. The call to love fate, while inspiring, encounters resistance from a society that values agency, autonomy, and the capacity to shape one's destiny. Moreover, the stoic detachment from external factors may overlook the richness of human experience. Emotions, far from being external, serve as guides, providing insights into our desires, fears, and aspirations. Modern psychological research supports the idea that embracing and understanding our emotions is crucial for overall well-being and mental health. In a world where the pursuit of individual and collective goals involves planning, strategizing, and envisioning the future, the stoic insistence on living each day as if it were the last encounters practical challenges. While the present moment holds significance, the ability to plan for the future set long-term goals, and work towards them shapes the narrative of our lives. The dichotomy of control, navigating the stoic waters, the dichotomy of control, as espoused by the Greek philosopher Epictetus in 125 AD, is the philosophical compass that guides many down the stoic path. At its essence, it urges individuals to delineate between what lies within their control, internals, and what lies beyond it. Externals, internals encompass our thoughts, actions, desires, and aversions, essentially the realm where our agency resides. Externals, on the other hand, encapsulate elements like our bodies, property, social status, and the unpredictable events that constitute life's fabric. Holiday, in his contemporary interpretation, often emphasizes focusing on what one can control, echoing the stoic principle of directing attention towards internals. However, 
The seemingly clear line between these two realms blurs upon closer inspection. The fluidity of control becomes apparent when considering that what is beyond our control at one moment might fall within our sphere of influence in the future, or vice versa. This Stoic dichotomy traces its roots back to Zeno of Citium, the founder of Stoicism, who sought to identify intrinsic goods by examining external factors like wealth, possessions, and appearances. Zeno concluded that true virtue and goodness lie in the internal domain our reason, virtue, and good nature. However, this rigid separation encounters challenges when we acknowledge the interplay between our internal and external worlds. For instance, valuing certain external elements becomes essential for a coherent value system. The Stoic notion of preferred indifference acknowledges that while externals are not under our absolute control, they can still be desired or rejected based on their utility. This introduces a level of complexity, challenging the Stoic assertion that we should wholly detach ourselves from externalities. Life in ancient Greece and Rome, a tapestry of tragedies. To truly understand Stoicism, it's crucial to explore the backdrop against which it emerged, the tumultuous societies of ancient Greece and Rome. Life in those times was marked by uncertainty, brutality, and fleeting nature. The Stoics, including luminaries like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, grappled with the harsh realities of hunger, disease, war, and the capriciousness of fate. Seneca's life, in particular, reflects the precariousness of existence in ancient Rome. Accused of adultery with the Emperor Claudius's niece, he faced exile, but was later summoned back by Claudius's wife, Agrippina. Seneca's teachings to Nero on kindness and justice ultimately clashed with Nero's tyrannical rule, leading to Seneca's forced suicide. The Stoics, living in such a volatile environment, sought solace in the notion that accepting life's hardships and acknowledging their transience could pave the way for inner peace, fate, and the gods, Stoicism's cosmic framework. Stoicism's cosmic framework, rooted in the belief in fate and the influence of gods, further shapes its perspective on life. The Stoics, akin to many ancient Greeks, believed in a predetermined order orchestrated by divine forces. Concepts like Clotho, Lachesis, and Atropos represented the spirits of fate, underscoring the idea that our lives were meticulously planned by the gods. This acceptance of fate and the emphasis on amor fati, love of fate, permeates Stoic teachings. Ryan Holiday, with his tattoo proudly displaying this phrase, advocates embracing whatever unfolds in our lives as an opportunity for growth. However, this fatalistic approach raises questions about the Stoic insistence on loving every aspect of one's destiny. In contrast, Nietzsche challenges this notion, suggesting that not every experience makes us stronger. Some adversities may cause irreparable harm or profound suffering, questioning the wisdom of unconditionally embracing fate. The Stoic assertion that external events are indifferent implies a detachment that might overlook the nuanced impact of life's intricacies on our well-being. The limitations of Stoic indifference. Stoicism, as a philosophy of life, is often critiqued for its tendency toward what Nietzsche termed stone-cold indifference. The Stoics advise cultivating emotional detachment to navigate life's challenges. However, modern psychological insights, particularly from neuroscientist Antonio Damasio, challenge this perspective. Emotions, far from being irrational intruders, are integral to our cognitive processes, guiding us through the complexities of human experience. Holiday's assertion that emotions can be harmful if allowed to dominate our lives misses the multifaceted nature of human emotions. Research indicates that suppressing or fighting negative emotions might exacerbate their impact, emphasizing the importance of acknowledging and working through them constructively. Moreover, the stoic separation of the soul, reason from the body, emotions, 
seems at odds with contemporary understanding. Damasio's work highlights the integration of emotions into cognition, suggesting that emotions play a crucial role in shaping our understanding of the world. Rather than viewing emotions as external, acknowledging their intrinsic connection to our reasoning might offer a more holistic perspective. Stoicism in the modern context, a call for personal agency. In the current era, characterized by unprecedented advancements in science, technology, and governance, Stoicism's resurgence suggests a collective yearning for personal agency. The dichotomy of control resonates in a world where individuals seek stability amidst external uncertainties. Ryan Holiday's popularization of Stoicism aligns with a societal inclination towards self-help and resilience. Yet, as we engage with Stoicism, it's essential to critically examine its applicability in a world vastly different from ancient Greece and Rome. The dichotomy of control, while offering a valuable mental framework, requires adaptation to the intricacies of modern life. Our ability to influence external factors, to shape our destinies, challenges the stoic notion of complete detachment. Rethinking the dichotomy, shaping the future. The stoic philosophy, with its dichotomy of control and emphasis on fate, provides a lens through which we can reflect on our lives. However, it necessitates reinterpretation and adaptation to align with our contemporary understanding of human nature and agency. In the face of life's uncertainties, perhaps we don't need to merely accept fate, but actively shape it. Pugna Fati, or the fight against fate, recognizes the power of human agency to challenge, transform, and mold the world according to our values. While stop, Isism may offer valuable tools for cultivating resilience and tranquility. A more nuanced approach involves acknowledging the dynamic interplay between internal and external factors, embracing life beyond indifference. The stoic call for indifference may inadvertently limit our capacity to fully embrace life's richness. Instead of resigning ourselves to a passive acceptance of fate, what if we approach life with an active engagement? Life, in its entirety, is not a mere sequence of events, but a canvas where we can paint our aspirations, dreams, and desires, valuing connections in a connected world. The stoic insistence on indifference to external events raises a critical question. How can we maintain a genuine connection to the world while practicing stoicism? The answer lies in redefining the dichotomy of control to incorporate the idea that our interactions with the external world are not merely about acceptance or rejection, but about finding meaning and purpose. Consider the example of relationships. Stoicism may advocate for indifference to the actions of others, emphasizing that we can only control our responses. While this is undoubtedly true, it doesn't mean we should remain detached from the impact our actions have on the well-being of those around us. By valuing our connections and actively contributing to the well-being of others, we transcend the stoic barrier of indifference, enriching our lives through meaningful relationships, crafting a narrative, living each day as a chapter. The stoic notion of living each day as if it were our last carries a certain weight of finality. What if, Instead, we viewed each day as a chapter in an unfolding narrative, a story we actively write with our choices, actions, and aspirations. This perspective encourages us to set goals, dream big, and shape a future that aligns with our values. Life's journey becomes more than a stoic endurance test. It becomes an opportunity for growth, exploration, and self-discovery. By acknowledging our ability to influence the course of our lives, we move beyond mere acceptance and into the realm of co-authorship, the spectrum of emotions, from tranquility to passion. Stoicism's emphasis on emotional tranquility has its merits, offering a pathway to resilience and inner peace. However, the insistence on complete emotional detachment may rob us of the vibrancy that comes with the full spectrum of human emotions. 
Instead of seeking stoic indifference, what if we embraced our emotions as guides, recognizing their role in shaping our understanding of the world? Modern psychology highlights the importance of emotional intelligence, the ability to recognize, understand, and manage our emotions. By navigating our emotional landscape with mindfulness, we can harness the power of emotions to fuel our creativity, drive, and passion. Rather than suppressing emotions, we can integrate them into our journey, using their energy to propel us forward. Reimagining Stoicism, a philosophy for the modern explorer. In reimagining Stoicism for the modern era, we acknowledge its timeless wisdom while adapting it to the complexities of our interconnected world. The dichotomy of control becomes a dynamic interplay, where we recognize the fluidity between internal agency and external influences. Rather than seeking an indifferent acceptance of fate, we become active participants in shaping our destinies. Stoicism need not be a philosophy of passive endurance, but a call to embrace life with all its uncertainties, challenges, and joys. By valuing our connections, crafting a narrative that aligns with our values, and embracing the full spectrum of emotions, we move beyond stoic indifference into a philosophy that celebrates the human experience in all its richness 